Welcome to the Refuse Ordinary podcast. I'm your host, Tamara, and I'm so glad you've decided to join us on this journey of discovering who God is and who we are in Him. We are so excited to share with you today another class from our full-time School of Transformation. Today's topic is called Barriers to the Prophetic, taught by Johnny Bowers. We hope you have a great listen. So we're talking about <laughs> barriers to the prophetic. It's biblical. Uh, it's... A lot of things have happened. Uh, all the whole Gospels is Jesus pro- fulfilling all these prophecies. So it's not something that we should be afraid of, um, but although it could be something that we have kind of a hesitancy to receive or maybe even try and step out and uh, prophesy because of things that have happened, like what Joe Bob is explaining, people prophesy and that everything is wrong. Hesitancy is a good word. He- you know, yes. Well, I mean, it's, it's a wise word as well. To listen to prophecy, examine the fruit, see where it plays out in your life. Um, I remember the first time I had a, I was talking to Rachie last week about this, and the first time I ever had a prophetic word was from Jim Paul. And you, how many of you guys have met Jim Paul? How many? None of them, really? Okay. Did you guys already talk about this last class class? So Jim Paul is a father's house uh, friend. Uh, He lives in Canada. Um, Steve met him through the revivals and all that stuff in Toronto. But uh, he would come here often and he would teach uh, in the school and he would give prophetic words. And I remember the first time Vicky says, hey, you got to get a prophecy from this guy. We're bringing him in. Do whatever you can to get a prophecy. Because I wasn't even a, in school at this time. I was still working a job and just a church attender. And uh, so I come in, and I, I didn't know what it was. I didn't even know what a prophetic word was. I just w- said, oh, I'm going to come and get one, whatever. I'll sign up. And I felt like I was in fast-forward, outer-body experience, weird. Like it, it just hit me weird. And But the, the things that, they, that, that he was saying all lined up with my life. It was like he knew stuff about my life that he shouldn't know because I don't know this man. And so he had to have been hearing from the Lord and told me all this crazy stuff. I remember I came out of that thing and I saw Steve and I said, this guy works for the government for sure. Like he knows all this stuff. Like I was like, he told, you told him stuff. And Steve's like, I swear, I didn't tell him anything. Oh, Vicky must have told him something then. Because he knows all these things about me that I've never told anybody. Things that, that, that have happened that nobody knows except for maybe a, cu- a couple of friends. And so it got me thinking, like, what is, it about, what is it about this guy? And it's nothing about this guy particularly. It's just that he's inclined to hear from the Lord. Isabel is inclined to hear from the Lord. She wants to hear from, from God for people. It's to edify people. It's to, to build them up. It's to give them vision for their life. It's to set them on a trajectory that God has put, that has put them on. And we don't go and... We shouldn't base our whole lives on a prophetic word, but we should definitely examine it, listen to it, write it down, and see if, what happens. Everything that I've had in, in, a, in past previous prophetic words, a lot of the things have happened already. And it's really trippy when those things happen. But there can be some, and what we're going to hammer on today is barriers to prophetic. We're not going to talk about like how we do prophetic and stuff like that. I don't, that's probably for another class. But there's barriers that happen, and it's not just with the prophetic. It could be anything. Praying, uh, going out and uh, preaching the gospel. Um, talking to random people about God, like any of those barriers get in the way, there's going to be a block. And what are some of those barriers? You guys just popcorn some answers. What are barriers for you guys? Being cynical. Being cynical. Secret sin. Secret sin is a huge one. Insecurity. Insecurity. Fear of man. Doubt. What if I'm wrong? What if I say the wrong thing? What if if I come out and I'm like that guy that, that... Joe Bob talked about earlier, and I get it wrong. 
I could screw somebody's life up. Right? What, else, what are some other things? Maybe shame. Don't know how to hear God's voice. Constantly questioning. Second guessing it. Yeah. I mean, that would, that would go with doubt, right? Second yeah, guessing uh, it. <laughs> but it's like, it doesn't matter. It's fine. There's no stupid answer. Well, well. <laughs> I mean, it, maybe there is. Yeah. You know We've what I mean. We've been together a while. You're like, come on. <laughs> no, I'm not so crazy. No. <laughs> yeah, I've fallen for that trap before. <laughs> <laughs> but there's all, there's, if God wants to use us, and there is a word that God's putting on our heart, but we're too afraid and we allow these barriers to come in front of us and we don't step into what God's putting on our heart or what's, what He's is burning on our hearts, then we might have missed an opportunity, right, for somebody else. Or maybe somebody has a word from you and you have some sort of hurt from the past and you block it out and you don't allow God to speak to you. I'm not saying God can't still use you or redirect your life, but it's going to be a little bit more difficult because there are things that God is, is He's saying prophetically that are, that are still going to happen. There's things been going on for thousands and thousands of years that have been prophesied, that have come into fruition, that have come into existence, that have, that have happened. But if the people don't step into what God is saying, then they're going to be held back. And I don't want to be held back. I don't want us to let our fear get in the way of what God is saying. I don't want to let secret sin rule over me and miss what God has for my life. <laughs> so these things, we have to get rid of these things, man. That's what inner healing's for. That's what we're, you know, that's what Luke's for. If you guys go talk to Luke, he's great at it. Um, so let's read... Let's read some scriptures, shall we? Let's do it. Let's go to Romans 12. So, all right, we're going to go, verse 12, verse 1 says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So allowing the Holy Spirit to come inside of you, to transform you. We're not going to conform anymore to the patterns of this world. We're, we're going to give ourselves as living sacrificings, sacrifices, not sacrificing, sacrifices, that is the thing that is going to please God. This is our spiritual worship. This is our saying, yes to you, God. I give you my, my yes. I will let you use me. I will be used by you. And I'm no longer going to be like the patterns of the world. I will no longer be bound by fear. I will no longer be bound by whatever it is in the past that kept me bound I'm going to allow myself to be transformed by the renewing of my mind. I'm going to have a kingdom mind. And when our minds are renewed, we act differently. We think differently. Then you'll be able to, be, uh, to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you, just as each of you has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we, are, we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We all have different gifts, and so now we're going to start talking about different gifts. So according to the grace given us, if a man's gift is prophesy prophesying, let him use it in proportion <laughs> to his faith. So let him use this gift to the proportion of his faith. In order to prophesy, we probably have to have faith. We have to have faith in God. We have to have faith in the ability to hear his voice. 
If we are receiving prophecy, we have to have faith to allow it to change us, to believe in God's words, to, to say that this person actually has something for me. And if those barriers are in the way, we're not going to be able to operate in this gifting. We're not going to be able to operate in even receiving it. And our faith, when we are held back by these barriers, whatever, like we said, fear, anxiety, secret sin, doubt, those kill our faith. Those don't allow us to have faith to receive, faith to hear. You know, the other morning, I was in the church and I was praying, and Anson was doing his thing in the back, like going crazy. And I think that's amazing. I think that how he wants to exert, or, or how he wants to show himself to God, to God is amazing. But there's a point in praying where I run out of things to say. I run out of lo- like like prayers that I could think of because I've been doing this now for ten years. You start to say things that you remember and. You have these little formulas of, God, thank you so much for today. Thank you so much for, you know, my wife and so, don't, so much for my kids. But when I'm, when I'm allowing myself to be used by God in a, in, in a place of worship, in a place of prayer, and even becoming prophetic in those moments of speaking things out, there comes a point where I run out of things for me to say because I'm using my own logical mind. And you hit a point where you can actually, at least for me, I, can, I physically felt like where it was like, okay, I'm out of things to say, God. I don't know what else to say. And, and, and it clicks and it takes over and it's like this is where faith comes in, where supernatural <laughs> faith comes over you and it's like you start saying things that you never thought you would say. You're allowing the Holy Spirit to use you and to speak things into existence because you're allowing your faith to be challenged. You're allowing yourself to be challenged and used by God in those moments. And oftentimes we've, we've uh, heard uh, Isabel say, I speak fast because I'm not trying to let myself take over. I don't want me to be the one that speaks. Yeah, that's cool. I want it to be something that I'm hearing from the Lord. And our brains are very uh, uniquely designed because they have, everything's in memories with your brain. Experiences, feelings, everything like that. So it's like remembering prayers. Oh yeah, I remember this prayer. Oh, I remember, I know how to say the right things. I know, it's like the Christianese things that we talk about. I know how to speak the language of church. I know how to speak the language of prayer. But when you're doing it so much and you, you get past that point of like, man, I'm, I got to do this. I'm going to do this for an hour, Lord. I'm going to give you an hour. At like 30 minutes, I'm like, I got nothing left. <laughs> like, I'm like, okay, this is where I'm going to have to let you just take over, Jesus. And in those moments of me giving myself to the Lord is where I'm going to be built up. It, there's nobody else in the building. It's just me and one other guy. We're not talking to each other. This is my time with the Lord. This is my intimacy with Him where I'm letting Him do what Romans is talking about, where I'm letting Him renew my mind. I'm I'm there pouring myself out. And the only way that I can keep pouring out is if I allow Him to pour in. Where He comes over me, He takes over. That's why it says that don't be afraid what you're going to say when you're before people in the courts because the Holy Spirit's going to speak through you. The Holy Spirit's going to do it. I don't know what to say. That's what Peter, before all the people, before the, you know, when after the, uh, the Holy Spirit comes upon them and acts, and they're in front of all these people, people, and Peter's filled with the Holy Spirit and gets up and delivers this message that could get him killed on the spot. These men are not drunk. These men are, you know, it's like he gets up and says all these things. <laughs> There, Jesus, the one that you guys crucified, he, you know, it's like he, he's not saying things on, that he would say. He's saying things because he's overtaken by the Holy Spirit. 
And he's allowing himself to be poured out by the Holy Spirit. But we're not going to be poured out by the Holy Spirit. We're not going to get into that flow with the Holy Spirit if we're still allowing fear to come over us. Oh my God, what am I going to do? Oh my God, what am I going to say? I can't do it. Well, then if, God, if you're not going to let God use you, then he's gonna, somebody else is going to come along that's willing. But why not you? Why, why not us? I'm tired of letting fear get in the way. So many stupid things, man. I, the things that, that I'm battling right now, that I've been battling for 10 years with Luke and inner healing and with God, and I'm, I'm doing this thing right now, it's like the, the biggest lies that come over me, oh, you're stupid. You're dumb. Why do these things keep coming over me? If I believe these things and I let these things stay there too long and I romanticize over these things and fantasize over these things, I'll be leaving this place. I'll be having those meetings with Steve again. Well, why did you pick me? You got the wrong guy. You should have picked somebody else. And then he'll be saying the same thing that he does. We think I'm stupid. I picked you because I know who you are. You have to start to believe who you are. You have to start to tell these lies to go so that God can use you. Man, you're not too stupid. You're not too broken. You're not too old. You're not too far gone. God uses all kinds of people throughout the Bible that are old, that are young, that aren't even humans. Right? He uses animals. He uses, it's like, man, he can use me. But if I'm going to keep letting anxiety and fear tell me, oh, actually, you, you shouldn't say anything right now because you don't actually hear God. Oh, right. That's the, the enemy. He's trying to silence you. He's trying to confuse you. He's trying to trap you up. I don't want, I don't want River to prophesy right now. I don't want him to. No, heck no. So he'll hit you with, man, you're just a washed up whatever, punk rocker. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> right? No, he, he wants to use us, man. He wants to use us. And God wants us to walk in power. We don't see enough of that in the church right now. What we, I'm not trying to get all judgmental as I'll start getting all crazy, but it's like <laughs> I see a weak church. I see, I see the power of God not on display because of the things that the enemy has got us tongue-tied by. Our hands are tied. And sometimes it's not because we did it on purpose, but man, if you know the truth and the truth can set you free, man, use your gifts. If God has given you the gift of, prof of prophecy, you have something to say. If He's given you the gift of service or the gift of teaching or whatever it may be, prophetic, man, let it flow. And if you can't because you're in secret sin, then you need to book an appointment and, and get with somebody and for get forgiven. Get stuff out, get free so that God can start flowing through you. God can start using you. I was having a conversation with somebody the other day. He said, man, if God wants to use you like wildly and, and it might look weird in front of the church, don't hold yourself back. If you have something to say and, and you're not sure, go bounce it off of some one of us and say, hey, like, I feel like God's burning on my heart to say this to somebody. What do you think? Man, I really feel like that's right on. Don't, don't be too afraid. Don't be, what if I look stupid? You know what stupid looks like? Watching pornography. Drinking behind people's back. Cheating on your significant other. That's what stupid looks like. <laughs> I'm being serious. I'm just like, what are we doing here? The Lord has given us gifts and talents and the ability to hear His voice and to know things that He's telling us, and sometimes the church has to know about it. Man, go tell Steve. 
go bounce it off Steve. Man, I feel like the Lord's saying this. He, he's asking us all the time, more and more lately, hey, does anybody have any prophetic words? Has anybody had any words from the Lord? Has anybody had any visions from the Lord? Because we're in a season right now where we've seen people being sifted out of here. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> there's, there's a shaking going on in the church. He's cleaning the church out. I don't want him to clean me out of here. Unless he's the one that sent me there. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So we get to walk in authority. We get to walk in love. We get to walk in power. Jesus said greater things. And I know we've said this until we're blue in the face, but Jesus said we get to do greater things than he has done. And he's done some pretty amazing things. I mean, raising the dead, but I would just say a crazy thing is he cursed a fig tree and it withered up. I haven't done that yet. I haven't raise the dead. I haven't seen anybody's eyes open up from being blind. But I have seen people change their lives around. I have seen, in a sense, I guess I have seen the dead raised. I have seen people that look like they should have been dead and have come to life. I mean, if you've ever seen Kurt's picture from when he first got here, that dude looked like Tom Hanks from Castaway. Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't look like Wilson, but he did look like Tom Hanks, that's for sure. That dude was a walking nightmare. And, you know, it takes people, like I'm saying, like going back to like people that are considered the hyper-spiritual people. Man, it's not that they're hyper-spiritual. It's that they're willing to be used. They're willing to be look like fools. They're willing to be maybe wrong sometimes. Not everybody's going to get it right. But when you open your mouth and say, this is from the Lord, your heart's intention and every fiber of your being should be, I really do feel like this is from the Lord. And if I'm wrong, I will repent. But I'm not going to let a mistake hold me back again from being used by God again. Man, I lost my cool the other morning in the house. I'm sorry, guys, but I did. I confessed and repented to my family, but it's like, I lost my cool. And then it's like, oh, now you got to go be a pastor at SOT Light. Like Those lies come over you like, oh, you're not a pastor. You're not a teacher. You're not a good Christian. You just blew up on your family. You just yelled. Shame, shame, fear. Oh my God, no, dude, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. I'm, I apologize. I repent. I don't want to be like that. And I'm going to allow faith to come through and say, no, I'm going anyways. Because that's not who I am. That's not who you are. You're not who you used to be. And if you're still dragging your old body behind you, you need to let go. Because you can't have your Savior in one hand and your old life in the other. You gotta have your hands open to be used by him. Or these barriers are gonna keep coming in and they're gonna get taller and they're gonna get stronger. And before you know it, we're gonna be like, you know what, I'm out, it's too hard. I can't do it. I can't let God use me. I just can't get past a lie. Man, that's exactly what it is. It's a lie. It's a lie. Those things that you did in the past, those are true. But if you changed and you've allowed your mind to be renewed and transformed, that's not who you are anymore. Who would those people that we read about, the apostles, who would they be if they allowed shame to get in the way? There'd be no stories. We would be reading nothing. There wouldn't be no, you know, so much of this New Testament is written by Paul. And Paul tells his testimony. We just read it today in Acts. And it's incredible because he's before before King Agrippa, right? He's going to be sentenced. And he gets up and he shares his whole testimony of like, yeah, you know who I used to be. I was a Pharisee. I I had my vote on, yep, let's get him. Let's put these people in jail. Let's put these Christians in jail. And if they're going to be killed, you have my vote. 
But then he met the Lord on the road to Damascus, and he was blasted by this light and transformed. He had a moment with Jesus, and Jesus said, hey, let me use you. That's Johnny paraphrase. <laughs> let me use you. Let me show you how much you're going to suffer for my name. Let me show, you're my chosen instrument. Let me use you. No, nah, I'm sorry, Jesus. I can't. I'm just... Now that I realized I was wrong, I just have so much shame, and I think I'm just going to go back home, and I'm just going to allow shame to overtake me, and I'm not going to say anything because I realized I was a piece of garbage. Yeah, I'm good. Not going to write letters. Not going to preach. Not going to prophesy. Just going to go eat worms. I'm going to go be a victim. No, he said, okay. I got to swallow all this. The fact that I did all this stuff, dang it. I have to realize it, that it was, it was real. I did it. But I'm going to let that be the past. And I'm going to stand up and I'm going to go forward in love and humility and authority. And I'm going to preach and I'm going to let the words of God flow out of my mouth and change the hearts of many and shape this world and change. change he, it was a revolution. These people caused a revolution. They're... they're going against everything that the, everybody's all known for centuries and centuries. So Jesus, we thank you for the gifts and talents that you have given us. And if you're bold enough to just give him your yes, just say, I say yes to you, God. Use me how you will. Remove the fear and any barrier from the enemy, from my past, from myself, I want to be used by you. And I just bless you guys to walk in power, love, self-discipline, authority, to be excited to hear from the Lord, to be excited and hopeful for visions and dreams, words, prophetic thoughts, and anything that comes from the Lord to be excited, to be used by Him. But Lord, would you give us boldness to speak, boldness to, to fight the lies. <clears throat> Despite what we feel or we believe, Lord, would we just push past and trust you? Would you grow our faith, Lord? I bless your guys' as dreams. I bless your guys' as visions, words. I pray that you guys would get revelation from reading the Bible, spending time with the Lord, and that you would be renewed each and every day. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Thank you for listening to this episode of Refuse Ordinary. We hope you were encouraged, inspired, and even challenged to seek more of who God is and who you are in Him. If you have any questions about the School of Transformation or would like to apply for our next semester, please go to transformationschool.org or send us an email at info at transformationschool.org. See you next time.